Hi, my name is Stephen Robinson. I'm a lecturer at the University of East Anglia, and uh, I was a postdoc in the laboratory of Dr. Hodi Valadilk for quite a number of years. And when I separated from her, what she decided to let me take with me was the Bayer 3 Integrin uh, project. So really what my lab is trying to do is to redefine the roles of endothelial RGD integrins in angiogenesis. And really, I guess another title for this would be um, trying to understand all targets to develop new strategies, because the idea of targeting RGD integrins in angiogenesis in the context of cancer is not a new idea. It's something that's been around for quite some time. So let me set the context for you. There was a, an initial report by Brooks and all nearly 20 years ago now, in 1994, showing that alpha V beta 3 integrin is upregulated in angiogenic vasculature, but its expression is quite low in quiescent vasculature. And in the time that's passed since then, that we, we now know that pharmacological agents that block the interaction between the extracellular matrix and alpha V beta 3 integrin can prevent blood vessel formation in vivo. And we also know now that uh, in subsequent years to some of those initial studies that there's a very close crosstalk between beta-3 integrin and VEGF receptor 2 that is important for angiogenesis. So certainly alpha V beta-3 integrin can play a pro-angiogenic role in the context of tumors. Now that's always sort of stood in seeming contrast to the knockout studies, uh, which we did maybe about 14 years ago now where we actually, if we remove the expression of beta-3 integrin completely in animals, we see enhanced tumor growth in angiogenesis. And this is associated with uh, an increase in VEGF receptor 2 expression in the endothelial cells isolated from these animals. So since separating from KEBS and starting my own group, we're actually starting to take a closer look at this with the idea that perhaps the knockout model is not uh, an ideal physiologically relevant model to study the role of beta-3 integrin in angiogenesis. And part of that, the reason for that is that, as you can see here on this slide, especially in the context of a tumor, there are a lot of different cell types that contribute to tumor angiogenesis. And we're really interested in the role of the endothelium in this process, uh, the role of beta-3 integrin expression in the endothelium. Unfortunately, beta-3 is expressed in a lot of the cells that contribute to angiogenesis. So we've created um, beta-3 flux mice across to two endothelial-specific promoters, uh, Taiwan Cree, which is a constitutive model. We like to think of it as a cell-specific mimic of the total knockout. And then we also have the PDGFB Cree tamoxifen inducible model, um, which we like to think of as a genetic mimic of drug administration. Uh, we also use uh, heterozygous mice, but I won't really talk about those today. So I'm just going to show you some of the initial uh, allograft tumor studies that we did. Um, and this is where we take either B16F0 melanoma cells or CMT19T lung carcinoma cells, um, inject them subcutaneously, um, let them grow for a while, um, and then see what happens to the growth and angiogenesis in those tumors. So in the constitutive deleted model, we don't see any change in tumor growth or in angiogenesis regardless of whether beta-3 integrin is depleted from the endothelium. However, in the acute model, which is shown on this slide, um, if we administer tamoxifen to the animals, uh, let's say three days before administering the allografts, we see a reduction in tumor growth and a reduction in uh, microvascular density in those Cree-positive animals. And we can also make the inducible model behave like the constitutive model if we treat the animals for a long time with tamoxifen before administering the allografts. So really what that says to us is that long-term depletion of beta-3 integrin in the endothelium is not a good thing. And really where we want to go with this in the near future is can we use endothelial cells derived from these different models to discover whether there are es common escape pathways that lead to um, this resistance to inhibition um, after depleting beta-3 integrin. So one of the things that we've noticed when we look at the uh, signaling pathways in the endothelial cells isolated from these animals is a reduction in uh, focal adhesion kinase expression when beta-3 integrin has been depleted for long periods of time. 
So this gives us an idea that maybe this is associated with um, the lack of response or the lack of inhibition that occurs in the models where beta-3 integrin has been depleted for a long period of time. So in moving forward, really where we'd like to go with this, aside from looking at what mechanisms uh, are responsible for this escape from the inhibition, is to look at more clinically relevant scenarios, so looking at metastases, um, rethink how and where current drugs are used, can we target them directly to the endothelium, uh, rethink how different integrins regulate endothelial cell behavior. I think we sort of get narrow-minded and forget that the beta-3 integrin doesn't operate in isolation. Other integrins are also expressed by endothelial cells. And really, can we take a dual anti-angiogenic approach to increase the efficacy of anti-angiogenic treatments in patients where beta-3 integrin is only one of the targets? And then finally, I think the field in general needs to develop better integrin inhibitors. So inhibitors that not only block the interaction of the integrin with the extracellular matrix, but also prevent the integrin from being activated. Thank you for listening.